Hello and welcome once again to our third lecture on the topic of the kinematics of plate tectonics. This time we're going to be talking about transform plate boundaries and the Wilson cycle. In this lecture we actually have two goals. So we're going to first just describe, as we have in the past lectures, the essential features of transform plate boundary and then we'll review the Wilson cycle and its relationship to the different types of plate boundaries that we've seen thus far. Again, this will be a relatively short lecture, I think, um, because most of it is a review. As we've seen, we have the three different types of boundaries. Here we're going to talk about transforms. What we're looking at now is an example of a transform boundary in the top panel in map view and in the lower panel in a cross-sectional view. And the transform boundary is here offsetting two segments of an oceanic ridge that are shown at the top and bottom like that. Now, of course, when we talk about transform boundaries, we're talking about a place or a type of fault where we have horizontal motion of two plates just sliding past one another. So in contrast to what we've seen before, there's no creation of new plate or destruction of plates along transforms. We simply have horizontal slip. And uh, the most common type is what's shown in the picture here, that offsetting um, oceanic ridges. These are very common, and you can see them if you look at the bathymetry um, of most oceans with spreading ridges. If you look in the cross-sectional view uh, down below, what we can see here are the two ridges that are sitting up at relatively high elevation, and in between the two we have a transform fault that's visible only in the upper panel. And here we have our first opportunity to pause the video for a little question. And the question for you this time is, what is the slip rate on the transform fault in this figure? And of course I'm talking about the fault up here, easily visible in the top panel. So I'll let you pause the video for a moment, just have a quick thought about that, and uh, when you think you've got an answer, unpause it and let's see. Okay, I hope um, that you've come to realize that the slip rate on this fault is two times u naught, And the reason for that is in the upper, uh, on the top side of the fault in the top panel, we have a plate moving off to the right with a velocity of u naught. In the lower panel, it's moving to the left of the velocity of u naught, And so, of course, their relative velocity would simply be two times u naught. As I mentioned in the first lecture, um, the very first course lecture, transform faults are kind of a big deal because essentially they allow us to link up the different plate boundary types to form a complete circuit and establish really the concept of plate tectonics. So we had evidence before of spreading ridges in the oceans, we had evidence of areas where plates were converging in subduction zones and convergent uh, mountain belts. But it was transform faults that really allowed us to connect all those different fault types together into forming uh, true plates. And so here's the figure out of the Wilson paper from 1965, a big contribution to the idea of plate tectonics, showing dextral transform faults, different, six different types. So the top left panel is what's kind of most common, that's the ridge that's offset by a transform, but of course there are other combinations that are possible here, for instance in B, where we see a ridge and a subduction zone and a transform fault that's uh, running along the edge of that plate. Okay, so now uh, we've seen the three different plate types, margin types rather, and now we can talk about the Wilson cycle. So this is the idea uh, put forth in 1966 by Wilson that the opening and closing of ocean basins is something of a cycle, that it's open, they close, they open, they close, and it happens uh, repeatedly throughout time. And um, we're going to just take a quick look at a cartoon view, again from another figure from the Turcotte and Schubert textbook. So in top panel in A, we can see early onset of rifting. We've got a grobin that's dropping down as a continent is being pulled apart, and you can see the vectors pulling the continent apart there. As extension continues, we have <coughs> excuse me, thinning of the continent and the development of an oceanic basin and the formation of a seafloor spreading center. And so this is a result of ongoing extension. 
as extension continues, we're going to form an ocean basin, right? We've got the plates moving apart. We're forming new plate in between, so we're simply forming a nice ocean basin. After a certain amount of time, when the oceanic lithosphere has become significantly thick and cool and dense, it may begin to founder along the continental margin and want to sink. Um, again, because of the density of the lith, the oceanic lithosphere exceeds that of the asthenosphere. And we'll have the initiation of a subduction zone. So you can see that here along the left side where our subduction zone has formed on what was once a passive margin. As subduction continues, we now have relative convergence of the um, plates on either side of the spreading ridge. And in this case, in panel E, we've already subducted the, uh, the ridge. And so the two plates are now coming closer together. And as you can imagine, the excitement is about to kick off, and that is continental collision. And so as that basin is slowly closed, eventually we will have one continent collide with what was actually the other side of the continent initially after the ocean basin has formed and then closed itself back up. And of course we have evidence of this um, through a variety of different um, origins in time. So that's it. I think we've truly had a short lecture this time. And uh, so go ahead, take your quiz, and uh, see how well you think you uh, have understood the material in this lecture. And we'll continue on with the next one.